Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki no. Next on Hiki no, stories from across our island chain. People were spreading hateful comments on Instagram, so it was really easy for them to just come in and put me down like that. Find out how students who are being bullied online reach out for help. Meet a coach who turned his life around and is now dedicated to helping young athletes excel. See how a Kauai beekeeper ensures the superior quality of her honey by refusing to take shortcuts. Learn how to properly stretch to avoid sports injuries. And meet four sisters who pull together as their mother battles cancer. Stay tuned for these stories and learn about some unique music programs offered at the schools represented in this show. All on this episode of Hiki no. Can do. We are here at Kapa'a High School on the Garden Islands East Side. Our school offers a unique Polynesian music class to all grade levels and ability levels. No prior music experience is necessary to enroll. The teacher, Ms. Pleka Zerzao, is a dynamic, hardworking, and talented artist, musician, and dancer. Her students learn how to read sheet music, play the ukulele, and sing a variety of Hawaiian music. The following story by students at Kapa'a High School on Kauai shares one student's journey through dealing with the downsides of social media. It felt like I didn't really have anyone to talk to and I kind of was just on my own and no one would really understand. I was just at my lowest point. Trying to deal with it alone, 11th grade student Kyla Pia's conflict escalated. Well, last year I was in a relationship and things ended pretty badly so then it kind of turned into a situation where people were spreading hateful comments on Instagram. So it was really easy for them to just come in and put me down like that. Feeling like there's nowhere to turn is exactly the point to reach out and seek help. Just knowing that you're not alone um, and there's always something you can do about it. There's never a situation where you're just stuck and you have no options to get out of. A lot of the staff at the school and a lot of teachers ended up being there for me and talking to me and being able to work through the situation. I talked to the student that's having the problem and together we figure out how we're going to move forward. What worked for Kyla might not work for someone else. Different students handling unique situations require different methods. But regarding social media... Two things that students need to know. Number one, once it's out there, you have no control over it. If you think it's gone, it's not. And think before you do stuff. T, is it true? H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? And K, is it kind? Having the right people on her side, Kyla gained the tools and support necessary to put it behind her. What will make people stop the fastest is to not engage with them. When you're being bugged by somebody on social media, block them. I think the main thing to remember is that there's always someone to help. There's always someone you can go to for help, even if you feel alone. I overcame this by talking to teachers and telling them the truth of how I really felt about the situation. When you're ready to open up, open up. If you are a victim of bullying or you know someone struggling to deal with their conflict, there's a lot of help on campus. We want to see you guys be successful, whether it's in school, whether it's your emotional health or feeling safe on campus. And so just don't be afraid to reach out to someone for help. Our goal is to make the bullying stop and we'll keep going until it does. With dedicated adults here to help, you can get through anything. This is Kamale Pasqua from Kapa'a High School for Hikino. If you are a victim of online bullying at your school, reach out to your school counselor for help. We're here on the campus of Moanalua High School on the island of Oahu.
With over a dozen classes dedicated to music, Moana Lua has also been home to a jazz band for 21 years. It is an extracurricular program that is entirely audition-based and runs in a non-traditional concert setting. In rehearsals, members are able to experiment with different types of music, such as swing and jazz. The following story by students from Moana Lua High School on Oahu is about a teacher and a coach using his second chance to push students to be their best. This is where my heart is. This is the only place I want to teach and this is the only place I want to coach. Moana Lua High School baseball coach and teacher P.R. Akala helps push his students to strive for a fit life. And he comes to the school early opens up the weight room for all athletes, or all students, you know, and he stays late to the very end, and that's what I admire right now. Everything matters. Um, I think just acknowledging their hard work and, and kind of staying with them through, their, through that set that they might be kind of struggling with or getting lazy with. I think Coach Pete's like physical, like, Appearance just next to you kind of just pushes you to like keep going like non-stop like why not just keep going like one more What could hurt? But the motivation to be better that he has now wasn't something that he always had It was a time in my life especially my younger days of college of Sort of making wrong decisions sort of being around the wrong people um, and, and, and learning from those decisions a specific wake up call in my life that if I didn't change actions, turn things around, that I would have went down a, a really wrong path. Until he got help from his mentor, Coach Scott. Coach Scott pushed me to play college baseball, and that was the turnaround point of where I got my second win to become a teacher. Taking a step in the right direction, he is now leading his students on a path that he never took. What I think my students can take from my experience strictly because I've been there, done it, or I've seen it. I've seen him since he's come back from school. And then he went on to get his master's after um, seeing him grow as a young until adolescent till now. I mean, Guys, he's so grown so much. Responsible and Stay how he drives and brings out the best of everybody. Down. It's inspiring. Down, to the stage where if I had a son, I would want it to be just like him. He's just there pushing you every step of the way. He makes sure that you don't fall. He makes sure he gets back up. And every time, he just pushes you more and more throughout the whole time. I think he has the unlimited ceiling of coaching. And I think the, the demanding of the expectation is to, to help them out, be successful in the rest of their lives when as, as we graduate, as we get older, those, those choices and those, those things that we make, they become a lot harder later on in life. For Coach Pete, helping his students find their second win is what matters most in his own life. I'm Ebony Lowe from Wanalua High School for Hikino. Next, we tap into the Hikino archives for another story about a coach who turned his life around, this time from students at Iolani School in Honolulu. Three shots and three hits. That's how Dominic Ahuna imagined his life ending if he continued on the path he had taken, working as a bouncer in clubs where crime and violence were commonplace. I would kiss my mom goodbye every night, knowing that I could die that night and come back, come back in a body bag. After graduating from Iolani, Dom Ahuna was playing collegiate football at the University of Puget Sound when his father died in 1995. He gave up his football scholarship after his sophomore year to work three jobs to help his family. Basically, he was my coach, so when I, stopped playing, when I lost him and I stopped playing football, I just kind of lost my identity, and that's how I ended up, um, you know, just kind of wandering. Eventually, he fell into the nightclub business, working as a bouncer in three of the largest clubs in Hawaii. Many of his associates are now in jail. Drug dealers would frequent our clubs. Um, they would pay me, they would literally shake my hand with two or three hundred dollar bills, to, uh, to block a door while they would take people in the back and do transactions, you know. So I basically made three, three, $300 in two minutes. A potentially deadly confrontation with a drug dealer awoke him to the reality of his lifestyle. The drug dealer and his gang waited outside the club for him one night, hoping to follow him home. And I had hung out with criminals long enough that I knew what he was doing. He was trying to follow me home to see 
who I lived with because they want to hurt my family members. See, criminals are smart. They know that you know, it's not enough just to hurt you physically, but if they can hurt someone you love, that causes more of an impact. Knowing this, Ahuna drove across the island and lost his pursuers in Nanakuli. Arriving back at his home in Makiki at 6 a.m., Ahuna says he heard the voice of God telling him that he had to change. Basically, I was, I had parked my car and he had spoke to me and he said, you know, if you don't change what you're doing, you're going to be there within a year. And it's almost like a movie played out right in front of my face. I couldn't stop it and I could see it. And it was, I saw myself and I saw two or three guys um, and I had pulled a, I pulled a weapon out of my waistband and at the same time I pulled the weapon out, these guys had their guns out and they had shot me three times. This vision of where his life was heading made Ahuna change his path. He returned to his faith, to football, and to his alma mater, accepting a position as the strength and conditioning coach at Iolani in 2003. Since then, Coach Dom has become a cornerstone on campus. Along with helping athletes physically, Coach Dom also founded the Iolani Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which gathers once a week for an inspirational service. And he's just an older brother who's showing me the ways. He's been through so much more than, than I have, and um, I know that I'll definitely encounter things that he has encountered. Over 100 students attend these meetings, which often have guest athletes coming in to speak, such as former UH football player and world's strongest man competitor, Joe Onasai. Yeah, I mean, basically in a nutshell, whatever they dream for their life, if they stay open to God, He can write their story better than they ever imagined. And that's what He's done for me. I didn't imagine I'd ever be in this place where I am right now. This was never part of my goal or my dream. But once I opened my life to God and I let Him take control, He's taken me places beyond what I ever envisioned for myself. And He can do the same thing for them. This is David Pang from Iolani School reporting for Hiki No. We're here on the campus of Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School on the island of Kauai. Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School is fortunate to have two outstanding music teachers to lead our music program. Ms. Tochiki, our band instructor, and Mr. Elias Gonzalez, our chorus instructor. Both teachers teach first, second, and third year classes, while Ms. Tochiki also instructs the CKMS Jazz Band, as well as the Kauai Community College Band. Mr. Gonzalez also teaches a music class for our after-school program. Both programs perform at various parades and community events and hold winter and spring concerts each year. Ms. Tochiki was recently recognized as an outstanding Kauai female leader by the YMCA of Kauai. Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School students enjoy a wide array of musical choices. The following story is by students from Chiefest Kamakahele Middle School on Kauai. It's about a local beekeeper who doesn't take shortcuts. Robin Fisher, the owner of Kauai Nectar Company, is a beekeeper. Literally, the world changed for me the first time I saw a beehive and understood what bees do. I found my first beehive in the house we were born and raised in. And through saving that hive, and then following all the wonderful serendipitous opportunities that happened to me after that, I became a beekeeper. Robin believes that avoiding shortcuts is what makes her honey the best. So often people taste my honey and tell me that it's the best they've ever had. And I... I can't say that it was because of something I put in it or something that I added or a thing I fed them. It's really just every step of the way, not taking shortcuts and always thinking about what is the right thing to do. And whenever you reach a hard choice, do the right thing because it's so reflected in the quality of the product. The hard work put into beekeeping is a humbling experience. They challenge you and they push you and that is something I always wanted, was something that would constantly push me so I didn't have to keep switching things or feeling stagnant or feeling like I was so good at something. It's, um, it's constantly humbling and I really like that. And so they can eat the honey and repair that whole thing quite easily because they are like little magicians, they're alchemists. They eat honey to make wax. So they have to eat eight pounds of honey to make one pound of wax, but they make the wax with their bodies. Working with bees has taught Robin many things. You have to be very adaptable and you have to be constantly learning and growing because the bees are very adaptable and they adapt constantly to weather and they are constantly growing. They fulfill their purpose and I think that people are the same way. They like to wake up with purpose every day and they like to feel needed and uh, to work hard and go to sleep tired. They can be all around you and not angry at you. You know that they're angry when they start bouncing off your veil. 
The condition of the bees is the most important thing. Can't force the bees to make honey if they're not healthy and happy. I have to be very aware of the details and the tools and the tricks that they're showing me. This is Natalie Zykowski from Chief Iskamanka Haler Middle School for Hikino. And now, students from Kalani High School in East Oahu will show you how to stretch before exercising in order to avoid injury. Don't lift that dumbbell. You're gonna pull a muscle if you don't stretch first. Doing stretches prepare your body by waking up the muscles and giving you a larger range in motion so you can move more easily and prevent more injuries. The first stretch will warm up your arms and strengthen the triceps, shoulders, and biceps. Stand straight. Then, swing your arms forward and make a circle. Make sure this circle is large. The next stretch is the Frankenstein. The Frankenstein stretches out your leg muscles and gives you more balance. This stretch is called the lunge and twist, which will stretch out your quads and hips and strengthen your glutes and abs. Take a big step with your right leg, with your left leg bent. Now that you have stretched, you can do your routine. Remember, the importance of stretching is to warm your body up. When warmed up, your body will be loosened and can move more easily without injury. This is Stacy Bay from Kalani High School for Hiki No. We take you now from preventing injuries to recovering from injuries with this archival story by students at Waiakea High School on Hawaii Island. I got kind of slowed down on one hurdle, hit the third hurdle, and my body went to the right, my legs went out to the left, and it tore. We were doing some drills and my foot got stuck in a hole while I was pivoting. It just over-rotated and it snapped. And I was ready to do my first tumbling pass and I went for my round-off backhand spring double four and when I landed it, I tore my ACL. Student athletes put in countless hours of practice perfecting their skills, but all it takes is a split second of error to set them off their track. Shannon Carvalho, a level 10 gymnast from Hilo, Hawaii, learned the setbacks of injury when she tore her ACL at a home meet in 2013. The comeback was um, probably the hardest thing I've done in my life, but I got through it. ACL injuries have become common amongst young athletes, something that was almost unheard of 15 years ago. The ACL is one of the four major ligaments in the knee, and ACL stands for anterior cruciate ligament. Contrary to popular belief, the rise in youth ACL injuries are due to the overall increased contact hours performed by athletes, not by overtraining or increased risk in sports. According to the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, ACL injuries are due to abrupt stops or changes in direction, whereas overuse injuries develop slowly over time. We have a whole lot more athletes practicing a whole lot more, so putting in a lot more hours. So if you increase the number of hours that get played, you will increase the injuries. It definitely pushed me back a lot in gymnastics, but with physical therapy, I was able to come back to gym within six months. Physical therapy and support equipment play vital roles in the recovery of an ACL injury, as track runner Coleman Shavs learned after his surgery. For the rest of my life, I'll have to probably use a brace. It's a hassle sometimes, but in the end, it's going to protect your leg and it's going to protect your chance of playing sports for the rest of your life. Baseball player Devin Iwahashi has also recognized the future effects of his ACL injury. I'll probably have to do rehab on it later and I'll probably struggle walking. Despite the long road to recovery, the passion that many athletes have for their sport overcomes the physical pain. In Shannon's case, after I tore it, it made me realize how much I love the sport. Gymnastics is definitely my second home. This has been Casey Laguire from Waiakea High School for Hikino.
Here in Waianae High School, we have a wide array of clubs for students to join. From business club to anime club, our students can find their own community here on campus. The Talofa Club, run by Miss Lo, is one of the most energetic clubs on campus who perform their songs and dance at various school events. They have easily made a name for themselves on campus through their enthusiasm and love to perform. Every year, the Talofa Club competes in the We Are Samoa competition, which showcases Polynesian culture through dance and music. Although the word Talofa originates from Samoa, this club welcomes students of all backgrounds with open arms. Students from Waianae High School tell the story of four sisters who come together as their family hits hard times. Hey, let me go, Gigi. <laughs> you missed the whole ball. Why are you in this thing? Janae, Jodeci, Janaya, and Journey are prepping for the big game. Oh. <laughs> Are you ready for Monday's game? I don't know. I'm nervous, but I'm ready to play. It's two days before Janae and Jodeci play the biggest game of their volleyball careers. Their opponent is top-ranked Moana Lua. Don't worry, you got him. They take care of each other. Jodeci, did you do the dogs? No, but I'll do it. I think we all just have to make sure that we're okay at home, make sure that we're taking care of each other. If you're wondering where mom and dad are in this story, well, two and a half years ago, Mom was diagnosed with stage four metastatic dimoma cancer. They haven't been home all weekend because mom is eating treatment. But that hasn't taken the wind out of these girls' cells. Me and my sisters, we had a lot of responsibility to take care of at home. And they're like my second wind. They are the reason that I keep going and never give up. My choice is take out clothes. Yes. It sounds easy now, however. Nobody wants to hear that their family member has cancer, right? Nobody wants to hear that. I know we cried the whole, that whole week, I think. The problem is, is grouping. In a perfect world, these four girls would only have to be, well, four girls. <laughs> so to this day, right now, she's still fighting it. It only made it stronger in the end. But when game time rolled around, Mom was there to support her daughters. Defense! Defense! Yes! Win or lose this game, these sisters know the real battle they're fighting is one they'll win because they have each other. This is Tara Kapuwa from Wana High School for Hikino. Well, we've come to the end of this episode of Hikino. Remember, all of these stories were written, shot, and edited by students like us. We hope you've enjoyed watching them as much as we've enjoyed sharing them with you. Be sure to tune in next week for more proof that Hawaii students hiki know can do. Board. We start. We both started at Chiefus under Mr. Matsunaga. We were sixth graders who didn't really know much about mm -hmm. media productions, but I mean, look at us now. We grew from from where we were, mm -hmm. you know, starting in middle school, and you know, our production our, and our quality has gotten 
um, up and up and up and mm -hmm. up and it's it shows how much effort we've put into Hikino mm -hmm. and how and, and into our stories whatever stories we tell we we're here um, to tell it in the best way possible mm. and with the best amount of effort and that's one um, important attribute of life is to do everything a hundred percent and I think Hikino has definitely taught us to how to do that how to how to put 100 percent in in effort go from good to great, great. Yeah, yeah but we've definitely become better storytellers because of this and I think it's gonna follow us in our future like it's not something we're gonna forget we're always gonna think like you know like I said earlier hey that was a great story let's do this we have to tell it we're gonna keep thinking that and we're gonna want to put our best foot forward whenever we do want to produce something like this and I and I think we're always inspired. Every day, like when we watch a, um, a news story or we're watching Hiki no, we're always inspired to better mm -hmm. um, our skills. Mm -hmm. And that's one great thing about, um, about this whole aspect is we're not only, these are not just the base, these are just the basics that we're learning, mm -hmm. but we can go beyond that. Right. And, right. and it's not only um, of what we're doing, but also what other people are doing. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe changing it up, doing things differently and um, helping us grow as journalists and um, cinematographers mm -hmm. and reporters. You know, each story we tell isn't just another new story that we're producing. It's true story. It's yeah, it's genuine. We yeah, it's, it's a way for us to hone our skill mm -hmm. and to get better and to continue to revise and edit and pick up on new things that we may not have seen before or mm -hmm. learned about earlier. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely the greatest learning experience I've ever had in my academic career. Me too. I, there's so many things that I took from what I've learned from Hikino in middle school to now. Like not just in digital media. media. Yeah, not just yeah. In digital, but life skills, life lessons mm -hmm. that I carry with me still today. Broadcasts of Hiki no are made possible by the support of viewers like you. Mahalo, and by Bank of Hawaii Foundation, investing in Hawaii's future by promoting collaboration, critical thinking, and other 21st century skills through Hiki no. Kamehameha Schools, empowering Hawaiian keiki to explore, discover, and inspire. ABC Stores, a local company helping to transform education and develop Hawaii's workforce through bold learning initiatives like Hiki no.